back everyone, Michael here, offshore capitalist, offshore citizen. We're talking today about the subject of tax avoidance versus tax evasion. What is the difference? Is there a difference? So here's what happens today. Today you get a lot of mismatch of words and these words actually really do matter. They have like a legal connotation. So tax avoidance is legal, tax evasion is not. Uh, you'll also hear the term tax planning in there and you'll hear another term which is aggressive tax planning. So what's happened is in the political environment, a bunch of government people have started to throw around this term aggressive tax planning, which is not actually a legal term at all. It's a marketing term. It's a term that's trying to uh, vilify those who are doing something which is perfectly legal, okay? So let's talk about the difference. So tax evasion is when you misreport what is going on for you, okay? So you're illegally, uh, you're, you're violating the rules by, let's say you made a million dollars, you report that you made 500,000. In most parts of the world, or at least a good share of them, this could land you in prison. And not only could it land you with fines, etc. it could create all sorts of different issues with you, okay? So that's in itself uh, not good. So nobody is ever encouraged to do that. This is, you'll often see people who are looking for strategies for how to get away with evading. So for example, they're sitting there and they are uh, going and trying to find ways of hiding, okay? So they're saying, okay, well, where can I go that I can hide what it is that I'm doing? And so this is where you see people who are trying to avoid CRS. This is where people are trying to, you know, go to places that don't report, etc. And this was really popular back in the day because it was really easy back in the day. So I would say that in general, this is what gave Offshore a bad name, okay? So you'd have people who could form a company in BBI, they could have a bank account in Switzerland, and that was that. It was really simple, it was really straightforward. And then in about 2009, the US government attacked Swiss bank secrecy. So basically, the way it worked was that Switzerland, uh, it wasn't a crime to do tax evasion in Switzerland. And they would only comply with foreign governments if it was a crime also in Switzerland. So if there was murder in the US, America was, putting pressure on uh, Switzerland or something to do with murder, that was fine. They would go and they would comply because of the fact that murder was illegal in Switzerland. But because there wasn't a crime by Swiss standards, they'd say, no, we're not gonna comply. And they had really strict bank secrecy. So you couldn't get the information that you were looking for, all right? Now, in 2009, the US government attacked UBS, which was the largest Swiss bank, and they put a lot of pressure on them and they managed to break Swiss bank secrecy. In 2011, uh, Credit Suisse settled with them and I think it was in 2013, something like 200 Swiss banks, 192 or something, settled with the US government and it was pretty catastrophic for the whole history of, uh, I would say, bank secrecy around the world. In the area that followed, you had a little bit with Lebanon and a few places like this that kind of maintained some, but it was kind of the beginning of the end. And since then you had FATCA that came in and after FATCA you had become a reporting standard and automatic exchange of information. And so today, information is mostly proactively shared with the government from where you're from. And so it's gotten much more difficult and therefore much less popular. And so for years, I mean, since basically I entered this field, we have been preaching, hey, look, if all you do is just legally plan things properly, you don't ever have to worry about this. And really what you're doing is you're being cheap and lazy by not planning things legally. It's not a good idea because it's not, maybe you're gonna get away with it this year, maybe you're gonna get away with it next year, but things are getting harder and harder and harder and that's not an environment you want to be in. So do legal tax planning. So tax planning is the process, of course, of organizing your affairs uh, in order to minimize or to optimize your tax. And this results in tax avoidance. It means you can avoid tax. Now you're doing that legally as opposed to illegally. So that's the difference. And then in there, we're in, uh, we're in Bologna right now. So all sorts of people are around. It's quite a nice place actually. I really recommend you come and check it out. Anyway, uh, and so within there we found a lot of, it's become unpopular for people to take advantage of these benefits, okay? So for example, Apple avoids tons of tax. Google avoids a ton of tax, and they say, well, this seems unfair, and so even though it's legal, it's kind of a lazy view by politicians to come and say, oh, it's aggressive tax planning. You're, you're pushing it too far. Well, 
if you have a problem with it, change the laws. That's what I would say, which they have done actually in the US and in a bunch of different places. They're continually doing it and making it more difficult, which is gonna lead us into some further videos. So that's the basics. I hope that helps you understand that it's perfectly legal to do offshore tax planning, to do tax avoidance, but tax evasion, misrepresenting what's actually going on, uh, and therefore violating rules, but not saying so is illegal and we don't recommend it. If you want help with actual tax planning, contact us and we'll help you out. We'll talk soon.